No, 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 no. T I G E R S. Fight, 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 fight. Mike, it's not even a top a thousand moment all time. Okay, Tommy, shut the hell up, man. Mike! Oh, of course, he... I'm gonna go with the right answer. It's Ryan Eads of the Baltimore Orioles. He only he's only wore the number eighty for uh, um, eight games. He's only one of two players. You know what? No, no, I'm not gonna take this. <laughs> Welcome back to Go Chat. We have a great episode planned for you guys today. But first, Tommy is back. We finally have the whole game get back together. First time in a couple weeks. So first, Tommy, he missed the um episode number 87 so give us your go the number 87 first then we could hop into the go the number 80 tommy go ahead yeah well it's great to be back glad to be here um i'm gonna go with Sidney crosby i think that you guys covered it pretty well last week um you know not gonna dive too much into it. i know connor did it but i'm gonna go with Sidney crosby for the go number 87 great pick there tommy the correct pick but anyways, let's hop in right into the golden number 88. I'll, sh- I'll send it first to Connor, who's shaking his head right now, even though he made a bogus pick last week with Reggie Wayne. Anyways, who is your golden number 88? My, I'm just going to go back to 34. He went Paul Pierce. Uh, number 88. I'm it gonna doesn't go, compare. It just I'm going to go with the all-time greatest tight end of all time in Tony Gonzalez. <laughs> he is a NFL Hall of Famer, 14-time Pro Bowler, six-time All-Pro. He's a part of the Hall of Fame all night, all 2000s team. Obviously, started his career with Kansas City uh, until 2008. I know him as an Atlanta Falcon. Um, that's more around the time when I was really invested into football, was around that 2009. Uh, over 1,300 catches, over 1,500 yards, over 110 touchdowns. Uh, he was that big body. I mean, he's really shaped the NFL into the, the tight end type league that it is now. I mean, he groomed Rob Gronkowski into eventually what he was not, and not actually groomed, but. Rob Gronkowski kind of shaped his game around Tony Gonzalez and then George Kittle came around and now there's Kyle Pitts who's in Atlanta. We never know what that could be like, but uh, Tony Gonzalez here for 88. Great pick there, Matt. Who do you got? Listen, 88, it's always been a lucky number for me. I mean, quite literally, I used to get 88s on tests all the time. Um, <laughs> that's not even a lie either. Like 88, it's always been a lucky number. It's always been one of my favorites and I'm going to have to swing it to the greatest American hockey player to ever play. And that is Patrick Kane. I got the Jersey right here. Also greatest last name too. Connor, you probably know nothing about Patrick Kane. So let me just, I know play. enough that he's not the best. I think it's a great thing. The best, um, 88 or 88. Oh, come on, dude. I mean, listen, Tony Gonzalez is great, but here's what Patrick Kane brings to the ice. He's a three-time Stanley Cup winner, four-time All-Star, the 2015-16 Hart Trophy winner. Honestly, probably would be the Hart Trophy winner if Connor McDavid wasn't playing right now, and Connor McDavid is just a whole other <laughs> human being. Um, <laughs> the Blackhawks didn't even make the playoffs. What are you talking about? I mean, the, the way he dominated on the ice and it literally, quite literally with the points, especially with the point system now, we, we know that the Hart Trophy is kind of based on point system in the past few years. Um, I mean, Nikita Kucherov and players like that. But that's not the question. That's not what we're talking about here anyway. Uh, Patrick Kane has just been so dominant since he's got on the ice in uh, 2000, oh man, 2008, I think, um, right away with his rookie year. He's been on one of the greatest uh, hockey teams ever, too, in, in the past decade, of course, uh, winning three Stanley Cups there with the Chicago Blackhawks, with uh, Jonathan Taves. And, you know, looking at his stats in American hockey players, he's fifth on the list right now, um, two, probably like 300 points behind the leader, and he's played uh, way, way much less games. So Patrick Kane is going to be my greatest to ever wear the 88. I can honor Three, maybe three more receivers in the NFL who were better than Patrick Kane. But we'll swing it to, to Mike here for his go to the go to the number. I mean, I got to give credit to Mac. Patrick Kane is one of the best American-born hockey players of all time, and his career is not right. near done. So I'm, I'm not going to throw disrespect on Patrick Kane's name uh, like that. He was de- He's definitely one of the best players of our generation, part of that uh, Chicago Blackhawks dynasty that won three cups in five years which is absolutely insane. And really no one has done that in the NHL um, more than once or twice. 
So Patrick Kane, you know, an, a great pick there. But I got to agree with Matt and go – I mean, agree with Connor, excuse me, and go with Tony Gonzalez. Really, um, I've picked other receiving tight ends that have really transformed the position. And Tony Gonzalez just continued that throughout the um, early 2000s and uh, early 2010s with the Falcons. Um, just one of the best receiving tight ends of all time. <clears throat> Not only a red zone threat, but uh, a vertical threat as well. Um, Hall of Fame 2000 team is a part of the Hall of Fame. Obviously, 14-time Pro Bowler, six-time All-Pro. Um, while I, I, I really like what Patrick Kane brings to the table, doesn't compare to what Tony, Tony Gonzalez does. Also, big shout out to all the Cowboys 88 receivers, Drew Pearson, Michael Irvin, Des Bryant, and now hopefully C. D. Lamb will be in this conversation um, 10 years from now when uh, we're on episode 1064. Anyways, that's a conversation for a different day. <laughs> but sh- shout out to those. Of course, I-, I had to. 88 is a famous number for the Cowboys. Anyways, I'm done rambling. It's Tony Gonzalez. Tommy, who's your go to the number 88? Episode 1064. Why 1064? I don't know. <laughs> You mean 1,088 would make sense, but Tommy, please. It's just a random number. Well, that's fantastic. I'm going to go with Tony Gonzalez, I think. Um, You know, there's a baseball player I was thinking about. I'll give him his honorable mention. But like you said, Connor gave all the stats. Hall of Famer, 14 Pro Bowl, six-time All-Pro. He put together a really great career. Like you said, you remember him with Atlanta. Spent a good chunk of his career in Kansas City as well. So, Um, You know, he's on ESPN today, right? So he's still in the game. And I thought, you know, he put together a great career. So I'm going with him. But Albert Bell of the Baltimore Orioles also. Who is this guy? I don't even know. What is that name? Albert. You don't know Albert Bell. Well, I'm going to be honest. haven't heard too much about him, but he put together a great career. Um, (laughs) Tell us about this great career, Tommy. This I'm going to tell you all about it. So. 12 seasons for Albert. He only wore the number 88 for two of them. But, oh my but, but no, wait, God. time out. Time out here. <laughs> In those two seasons, he averaged 30 home runs and 110 RBIs. So very solid production right there. He had 381 career home runs, 295 career hitter, 1,700 hits in 12 seasons. Those are really solid numbers. I mean, you think if he was to play more, five-time All-Star, five-time Silver Slugger, you know, borderline Hall of Famer right there. So Albert Bell is a good honorable mention, I think. It's not like some of the others I've had. So, Can I ask what year he played in? Yeah, he played from 1989 to 2000. Okay. Man, Tommy, we really missed you, buddy. <laughs> I know I miss being here. I miss like bringing the uh, you know the baseball players for go the number. We haven't had any in a while. Tommy, I was I was talking to our old friend uh, Aiden Bohm the other day. Obviously, you guys remember the Tribe Club we did, and he told me that he has watched every single goat chat go to the number just to see the baseball player that you bring to the table. No way. Wait, so is is he watching right now? He's watching right now. Wow, Aiden Bohm, you choked in fantasy basketball so bad, buddy. I hate to break it. You choked so bad. Your team was so good, like, throughout the whole regular season. You just choked that stuff. I'm not going to swear. Choked that so hard in the playoffs. I mean, I, I won anyway, so who really cares? But he just choked so hard. Wait, it, it was he, like, a 12 was, at, like, one point? He was so good, and then he just lost as the uh, – what was he? The four seed? He lost. Yeah, he lost to Donnie. Uh, Donnie. Donnie beat him. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not Aiden Bohm out on the floor. Like, <laughs> come on. He puts the team out there. We're getting off track here, fellas. We're getting off track. We don't want to make his head much bigger than it already is. We're going to come back. There's some huge NFL news coming out, and we're going to be here to discuss it uh, when we come back. <laughs> Welcome back to Go Chat. We are back with an NFL talk. You know, Three, four episodes ago, five episodes ago, maybe we talked about Aaron Rodgers wanting out of the Green Bay Packers. That's still going on, if you guys wanted to know. Now we're going to sit here and talk about another superstar who also wants out, and that is Julio Jones, the Atlanta Falcons wide receiver. Did uh, He actually called – or Shannon Sharp actually called him during one of the their episodes on Skip and Shannon – 
and told him that he wanted out. Tommy, do you do you want to reenact? You you did a little reenactment yeah. before. I mean, do you want to do it again? I'll do it. I thought it was great. So like Shannon calls him up, right? And Julio says, I'm out of there, man. And Skip's like, see, I told you, he's out of there. He's out of there. <laughs> and, hey, I mean, obviously very big news in the NFL, but uh, yeah, that's my- I mean, that, that was a great reenactment, Tommy. <laughs> They you sounded yeah. exactly like Julio. No, he, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm he, joking. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So he did admit that he wanted out of there. Actually, I don't even think he knew he was on the air, to be honest. But news is he wants out of there. Supposedly the Falcons already have a, a first round draft pick uh involved trade ready for their June one once uh once the new season turns around. Connor, I'm going to swing it to you first. Um, we've swing it, we've swung it to you first during the go to the number. Might as well just keep swinging it to you first. Um, what are your thoughts on Julio Jones? What, what type of impact does he bring to another team? And maybe even what teams do you think he could land on, possibly uh, start with next season? I mean, <clears throat> I, I would say that this isn't the worst move for Atlanta. Obviously, Julio is now above the age of 30 and – he was hurt a lot of the year last year. Obviously, I know I picked him in fantasy football, and he was hurt quite a bit. He wasn't very productive on the field. And when he was on the field, a lot of his the targets that would normally go to him were going to Calvin Ridley. He's the new star there in Atlanta. I, I think he will eventually be that next Julio Jones because, I mean, they're both, they both came out of Alabama. If I do believe correctly, Julio was an Alabama wide receiver. Calvin Ridley obviously went to Alabama. Um, it, it's tough. I, I, I think it's going to be good for Atlanta because in the end, they're going to be saving upwards of close to $20 million in cap, I think. And they're going to be getting their young guys, young guys reps. I mean, we saw Russell Gage last year kind of broke out. I mean, they have young receivers who can be, can be productive. As far as teams that I see Julio going to, I, I don't know. I was thinking about this when I was working today because I knew we were talking about it. And the team that just kept coming into my mind was New England because I know Bill Belichick and I know that they now have Mac Jones there who I'm I'm presuming is going to start week one I don't think Cam will be the week one starter based off of camp but I he's going to want to bring in that Julio Jones similar to what he did with Randy Moss back in the early 2000s or mid 2000s um I don't know that's the team that keeps coming into my mind it's probably not right because I doubt they're going to be offering a first round pick just knowing the Patriots but I don't know. The, the, the teams, I, I have no idea. I'll tell you one thing, Connor. It is not the Cowboys, and we're going to go to the Cowboys fan right now. <laughs> Mike Buetti, uh, well, what do you think about this whole – Well, first of all, I don't really care that he comes to the Cowboys. We already have, like, a top three wide receiver group, so we don't really need him uh, right now, especially with that major cap hit. We need some defense. That's what we need. Um, but, uh, anyway, <laughs> um, I still think Julio Jones can make a major impact on – any team that he's on, as long as he's healthy. In nine games last year, he had nearly 800 yards and he had three touchdowns. Throughout his career, he's only hit the 10 touchdown mark once. He's not really a touchdown scoring guy for whatever reason, whether uh, that's Atlanta not using him in the red zone effectively or him just not being able to uh, cross the ball, um, cross the ball across the goal line. There we go. Um, Either way, he puts up massive numbers in the yards department. Even last year when he was really um, hampered um, with the countless injuries he had, he almost put up 100 yards per game and probably would have had 13 to 1,400 yards if he played a full 16 games. And uh, so I think w- whatever team he's, he goes to, he's going to really elevate them. And especially because he said he wanted to go to a winning team, I really think he could turn a fringe team into a Super Bowl contender. And there's one, there's a couple teams in my mind, like the Titans, obviously the Patriots, he would be a great fit there. I just don't think Bill Belichick um, is, is going to make that move and give up uh, all that capitals. I think he's worth at least a first round pick. I think the team that should really uh, go after him is the Indianapolis Colts. I really do think that uh, Carson Wentz could use that one uh, star wide receiver, you know, especially Carson Wentz is a little um, inaccurate with the football. Julio Jones has a Julio Jones has a big body, a big t- uh, he's a big target, and he has speed, uh, four four speed. 
So I think the Colts could really use a number one wide receiver. Michael Pittman is nice. They re-signed T.Y. Hilton. They have Zach Pascal, um, Paris Campbell, you know. Those are all great guys. But Julio Jones would be that de facto number one. And I would confidently say that they could be a Super Bowl contender with Julio Jones in the flesh. Uh, good insight there, Mike. It, I will Before I go to Tommy, I will give you these odds in order. Uh, we got the Patriots, 49ers, Titans, Raiders, Ravens, Chargers, Colts, Packers, Dolphins, Jaguars, Cowboys, Tuland, Julio. Those are the teams in that order. Um, obviously, from the top being the most likely, according to Vegas odds and betting, and uh, the least being the least likely in in there with that range. So, Tommy, I'm going to throw it to you. Uh, what are your thoughts on Julio Jones? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously big news, right? And we all know the impact that he's made during his time with Atlanta, seven Pro Bowls, two-time All-Pro. And, you know, any team's going to be lucky to have him, obviously. And, you know, I, I agree, Connor. I think he would be a good fit in New England. But um, I think you bring up a good point there, Mike, that, you know, any team's going to have to give up a lot for him. And, you know, it's going to be somebody that obviously can spare – um, you know, some draft picks or, um, you know, and or players, we'd have to see what ends up being. But um, yeah, I mean, right now, I'm gonna say New England, because I think that, you know, ultimately, if, you know, the other things to acquire him weren't a factor, I think that he certainly would be a good fit there in New England. But, um, you know, the asking price will be a lot. So we'll have to see if Belichick's willing to do it. And, you know, I think you do bring up a good point there, Mike. So, um, yeah, we'll have to see. It's definitely going to be interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I knew coming into this draft that either Matt Ryan or Julio Jones was not going to be a Falcon next year. And I knew it was going to be Julio because I thought could bring in Kyle Pitts. You're kind of bringing in a Julio type of player um, with, with a big size and really a flashy like, you know, you know what I, you know what I mean? Like a Julio Jones and a Kyle Pitts. Um, just two really good pass catchers. So I knew bringing in Kyle Pitts would mean that Julio would be, wouldn't be a Falcon uh, much longer. And that's even what they were, they were even shopping Julio during the draft, um, seeing what they would get there, but they ended up just keeping him for the whole new year. In regards to the impact, I mean, Julio, it's Julio Jones. He's going to make a really big impact and he, you do bring up his injury history. I think you brought that up, Connor. It is something to look at, but when he's not hurt, he is a top, he's a top five wide receiver. He's a top three wide receiver, maybe even two, um, when he's playing at his best. So it, 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 this is what's difficult about this situation. It's a wide receiver. So, like, any team necessarily can take a wide receiver. Now, like the Cowboys, they have three stud wide receivers. I don't see them making a trade at all, especially for a first round pick. That would be stupid. Um, but you know, like, <laughs> majority other teams, they can use a Julio Jones on their offense. It's just whether who's going to give up the most. Do you see with this with the Aaron Rodgers situation? We know that the the Broncos are a team that can easily, you know, take Aaron Rodgers because they are having quarterback issues, you know, the rave, the Raiders maybe even too. Um, so it's different with the quarterback when we're talking about quarterback, but for wide receiver, it's, it's so hard to predict. Um, but if I had to throw a team out there, I'm going to go with the favorite on the betting. Oh, wait, no, it's not the favorite on the betting. Oh, the Patriots are the favorite. Never mind. I'm going to go with the color of Mike's shirt, the Baltimore Ravens. Um, I think that them bringing in a Julio Jones target. Maybe running back Lamar Jackson can actually throw the ball um, and, 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 you know, get a lot of get get his passing yards up and show the world what he can really do, even though pretty much he showed the world what he could do his MVP season. I'm not just, you know, you know, it's a joke running back Lamar Jackson. Um, But that would be really intriguing. Just bringing him in and letting Lamar throw it to him and Bateman and now Marquise Brown. And, you know, Mike. Mike mentioned them during his statement, but I think the team that would need that needs Julio the most right now is probably the Tennessee Titans. I mean, obviously they, they lost a lot of targets this past offseason. I mean, they lost Joe New Smith. They lost uh, Corey, Corey Davis, Davis. Obviously they, they have AJ Brown and we bring up AJ Brown. I have not seen more campaigning in the league <laughs> or for someone to join their team. And in this amount of time, I mean, 
we saw uh, DeAndre Hopkins posting pictures uh, with him and Julio at the Pro Bowl a couple and years ago. And A.J. Green. A- a- and A.J. Green, who's now a Cardinal. Uh, A.J. Brown posted like a minute-long TikTok, crossed out the number 11 on his jersey, put an eight, said, Julio, I'm already wearing your new jersey here. And th- there was one more. I think it was Jalen Ramsey, I think, for the Rams, was trying to campaign there. Um, A.J. Brown also sent him like a voice message on uh, yeah. Instagram. Tell him to pull through to Tennessee. That, uh, that would be a great fit. I would tell you what, though. I think Tennessee would be a great fit because you, you have Derrick Henry, who's a power running back, A.J. Brown, who can go up and get the ball, Julio Jones, who can go up and get the ball, and then you have the per, the perfect system quarterback right there in Ryan Tannehill, who, who knows how to get it done. I, I, I think it would be a perfect fit for him to go into Tennessee. I just don't know if they'll pull the trigger on it. I, I think that A.J. Brown, Julio – combination they are such similar receivers like just the size and speed combination that would that would be absolutely game breaking for Tennessee and uh that would be awesome for them but also there's one more team I want to throw out there this is the trade probably won't happen given their actions in the past but I think the Packers would also be a great spot for them that would really make them a true Super Bowl favorite but I'm sorry Matt there's no shot that (laughs) they're trading for them for uh, Julio Jones, it would be a smart decision, 100%. Oh, you, yeah. you know, you, your window is right now, and um, I'm not sure if they have the team uh, to get it done. Devontae and Julio would be absolutely deadly, but uh, just rub a little salt there in the wound for Matt and that Aaron, Aaron Rodgers debacle. You, you know, Matt, I saw I saw a meme the other day, and, and it, it was just perfect. It was Aaron Rodgers talking to uh, Matt LaFleur, and it's Aaron Rodgers saying, can we get DeAndre Hopkins? And Matt yeah. oh, DeAndre no, Thompkins. We have DeAndre Hopkins at home. And then it's the Alors <laughs> uh, signing DeAndre Thop- Thompkins or something like Thompkins. And yeah. I, I thought that was absolutely hysterical. I, I, I love it. I, I love the bash on the Packers right now because for once, and, and it's totally nothing against you being a Packers fan, but for the longest time, it's always been bash on the Jets. No matter what season we're in, no matter what the record is, wins, loss, after, nothing. It's always bash on the Jets. Haven't seen much bash on the Jets this offseason. Love to see that it's the Packers. Who are are you talking on NFL memes or just us? <laughs> no, NFL memes just in general. Oh, I was going to say, because if we if we bash on somebody's team, it's definitely the Cowboys. The yeah, that's, that's not just us. It's just, it's just worldwide. You either love the Cowboys or you hate them. But I, I love seeing the Aaron Rodgers slander and Tom Brady uh, getting involved with it. I thought the post, yeah, was hilarious. I was so good with uh, Brooks Kepka and uh, – yeah. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau, that thought was absolutely hilarious. And just the fact that he's like such a dad makes it even like 10 times more funny. You know, a, a team that does have the capital for someone like Julio Jones is the New York Jets. Now, obviously, I don't I don't think they will pull the trigger because they went wide receiver in the draft and they went wide receiver during the offseason. I mean, they still have a first round pick from Seattle. They have two number twos this year, two number threes, two number fours. I mean, if there was a team that had the capital to get a move like this done, it is the New York Jets. Again, I don't think they make the move because they they address the wide receiver position in the offseason. They definitely have bigger needs. But that's the type of capital that I'm expecting that a team is going to have to pull through is at least a one, probably a two or a three, and then maybe one more uh, third-day draft pick uh, for, for Julio Jones. Yeah, uh, even even the Eagles have a capital. I was just thinking about too with their with their draft. I think it's going to be a win now, team. Though no offense to yeah. Eagles and Jets, I don't really think they're contending for a Super Bowl right now. Um, oh but- no, Zach, Zach Wilson went eleven for eleven on in in uh, seven on sevens yesterday. Ball didn't touch the ground. Listen, no no rookie is content. No rookies on a can Super Bowl contending team right now. Like a, no starting rookie, not even Trey Lance. So that's not even a hit on Zach Wilson at all. It's just no rookie. Chicago player. Bears? You can you Justin I, Fields? I would oh. say Chicago Bears is the best, the best Super Bowl contending team this season. As far as a rookie quarterback. 49ers, but that that's just a whole different conversation to be honest. Uh so back to Julio Jones. I think that a lot of teams, if they make this move, then this is truly, truly, truly a huge step for them. Uh, the Tennessee Titans right now, in my opinion, are on the brink of AFC play AFC playoffs, just because the AFC is really good. I'm not saying Tennessee sucks guys. So I, I don't want to, I don't want to see faces, but they're very, they're on the brink of the playoffs right now. And they could truly use a wide receiver like Julio. If they get wide receiver, they get Julio. 
I would say that they're winning that AFC South. Same thing with the Colts. If they get Julio, I would be more confident in them. The Packers, now they get rid of Jordan Love and get Julio. They met their relationship with Aaron Rodgers. Everything is great. And they're honestly a Super Bowl, Super Bowl contending team. You know, they just just pumping that up a little more with Aaron and or with Aaron Devontae and Julio there. That would be insane. But wherever Julio goes, it's just a step in the right direction for that team. Could push a playoff team into a Super Bowl contending team. We'll just we'll just wait to have to see. Like I said, I really don't know where Julio is going to go at this point. I think it's a team that's See, wait, can Julio decide where – he can't decide where he goes, though. No, he not really. No he doesn't have a no-trade clause in his uh, contract. So, like, how Deion, or Deshaun Watson, if he were to have been traded before, or even if he is still, if he if they say that we're going to trade you to, say, the Miami Dolphins, so to speak, he can put up that no-trade clause, and then he doesn't get traded to the Dolphins. He essentially gets to pick what team he gets traded to because of that no-trade clause. Julio doesn't have that in his contract. Yeah, so Julio can possibly not go to a win now. It all depends what's thrown at Atlanta, to be honest. It's not in Julio's hands. It's in whatever their GM. I, I think the Falcons will treat him well. You know, he, he's been there for a lot of years, uh, committed a lot of time and effort to that franchise. Um, probably the best receiver of all time there in Atlanta. So I think Atlanta will uh, treat him right. I don't really think a team out, outside of a win now um, mode will will give up that kind of capital because they're trying to rebuild. You know what I mean? But that's so. not going to be Atlanta's main priority, though, Mike. As yeah, no, one hundred percent. Getting 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 value gonna is going to be the first capital. thing. They're going to want the value more than anything. They're they're going to look for value and a good fit for Julio, but that value comes first for Atlanta. One hundred percent. Yeah, but Mike did bring up a good point. If you're if you're rebuilding, why are you taking a thirty something year old? Player? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And he's on like the last year of his contract too. I think. I think last last two. Or, I'm I'm not sure, but. It's it's coming to an end there. Yeah, it's Atlanta is coming to an end. You know, Matt Ryan can possibly quite possibly. Uh, That's why I had them taking Justin Fields in the draft. It would just make no sense to get rid of Matt Ryan when he's under contract for like three more years. I just don't. I, it just made no sense, Connor. Mm. Connor, the GM is not working right in the head. Oh, I would be the best GM. You you better believe that. Tommy, do you believe that? I think he'd be pretty good. I mean, he wanted yeah, to hire the salsa man, right? That would be <laughs> the salsa. You, you know, you know, we're talking about that. When we came on here, we were talking about NFL coaches being fired last year. That was the first name I brought up was Robert Sala. It was. So I I'm that, a genius. Call me the GM right now. I think he'd be great. I mean, yeah, sign him up. <laughs> well. I think that wraps up this segment. Does anyone else have any uh, other NFL comments that we can bring up now before we get into our Go of the Week segment? OTAs are happening. We're getting back close to more summertime football training camp soon. I'm so excited. Tim Tebow is looking a little weird as a Jacksonville Jaguar. I'm not going to lie. He's going to get random drug tests all, all season. I mean, do you see his muscles? Oh, yeah. He's been lifting those Bibles. Dude, he <laughs> – Listen, the Tim Tebow works harder than a lot of athletes. He's a hardworking guy, which I really yeah. respect coming into this league. I'm really interested to see uh, what what he brings to the table. I, I hear that they might use him Taysom Hill style, which will be very interesting. Um, I, don't, I don't know if Tim Tebow has the capability of doing that anymore. He's 34 years old. Taysom Hill runs like a what, 4-4? Four, four? I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens in Jasperville. It, it is intriguing nonetheless, 100%. Brandon Jacobs, former uh, Giants running back, says that he's a better athlete than Tim Tebow and wants to try out as a defensive end. I saw I saw he wanted to come back, but I wasn't sure. It was a defensive, defensive end. The end. Wow. No All shot. Right. I think that's going to wrap up our NFL segment. Um, we're not going to be doing goat picks on the episode. We will have a graphic up for those on Sunday just because a lot of the uh, NBA games for the following upcoming days. And are and NHL are still undecided. So we will pick those up and we'll have a graphic up on the Instagram later today as you guys are watching this on Sunday. So we're going to swing it right into the go to the week, then we'll get you guys out of here.
Welcome back to Go Chat. We are back with the GOAT of the week. You look at the leaderboard. Who won? I'm blanking out. Connor did. Connor, Connor who'd you have? Great. 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 Oh, that was the stupidest GOAT of the week ever. I forgot. Why? Wait, so I want to defend him on this. Are you kidding me? He was on fire. He had a walk-off. Then he had four RBIs the next day in Going back to the walk off, he tied the game with a home run. First of all, oh, it's fine. Finally... I brought that up. I brought that up. Tommy. Mike, said, Tommy. Mike said that Yankee Stadium was the only stadium in the MLB that that would have been a home run. Well, that's, that's where true. they were playing, Mike. That's where they were playing. <laughs> Tommy, Nikita Kucherov literally carried a team coming off an injury, carried a team over yeah. another team in hockey in the playoffs where something matters. Do you think I, gonna... I don't understand how Mike, if, if NHL wasn't such a minority sport like nobody liked it the kid yeah, would have 100 percent won if it if it was broadcasted like baseball and basketball i'm i'm defending mike here because steph curry had no reason to be up there <laughs> like steph well i mean Gla- glaber torres had seven rbis in a weekend yeah. a weekend against against the-, against, against the best team one of the best teams in the American League in the Chicago That's White Sox. Right, and the Yankees went on to sweep them behind Glaber Torres. And if we remember, Glaber Torres has really been cold most of this entire first month and a half of the season. And he comes alive when he need, when the Yankees needed them most. And he came up to the plate and he stepped up for them. And they were able to sweep one of the best teams in the American League and lead the Yankees into a huge winning streak. <laughs> so like the fifth best team in the AL counts as one of the best. Fifth best team in the AL. It was okay. the Chicago White Sox who had the best, the best okay. record in the American League. The best record entering the weekend, Matt. Oh my god! What are it's you talking funny. about? It's listen. Glaber Torres did have a nice couple of games, but it does not compare to what Nikita Kucherov did coming off a supposed season-ending injury, right? And he just completely transformed that Lightning team to a team that could have been bounced in the first round to a team well, that can actually Mike, win the Stanley Cup. You know what, Mike? Go to the week is is a competition where we allow our fans to vote on who won for that week. And, and the fans vote voted for Glaber Torres. So, so that means that, that he won for last week. I, I understand. I understand. Oh, sorry. Like, We're in New York. I'll, add an, I'll add another part. to Yeah. This. Half our followers are Yankees fans. That's why you won. That's why Let's I won. Bad. Bad. Think how many bad. Yankee players and how many times has he won? Don't bring a that lot. up. Wait, okay. He's every single like winning pick he had besides the first episode have all been playing. Yankees players. Tommy Tommy has six wins. I, mean, I guarantee you, I guarantee four, you, four at of, least. four of those six are Yankees players because one was the frontline workers that I Matt, gave. How many times have you won off Buddy Beheim or Luka? That's Doncic? our point. That's the point. That's the point. Luka Doncic. How many times have you won off Luka Doncic? Like twice, but that's the point. But what do you yeah, have the, against Glaber Torres? He's the he's the short. I don't have anything the against the him. I'm just saying is, the key to saying is he won that. I'm not even saying, vouching for my what own guy. Saying is he won because of new, he's a New York Yankee, not for the yes. fact that he had seven RBIs in a weekend against the best team in the American League, had a walk off hit after tying the game, contributed both of those runs in that game. And they're, not, they're not mentioning any of that about about why he won. And the final out of Corey Kluber's no hitter went to him threw over to first, even though it was an incredibly routine play. <laughs> but he he was on the end of that play. So let me tell you, Glaber Torres is very deserving. I voted for Connor. Shot. I'm proud that I did, that wow. a Yankee got a win. And it was tremendous. Go Connor. Look, okay, you know what? I'm not. I'm not even vouching for Steph Curry. Second, like I will oh, give good. you. He never. Second. He shouldn't have been up here on the wall in the first place. He led a team to a loss. Okay, let let's. I don't let's think stop you focusing on a team, Connor. One player does not make up a whole team. <laughs> I don't right? know. Labor Torres is pretty much the Yankees' offense last weekend. All right, Tommy, you haven't done go of the week in two weeks. Might as well you give your go of the week first, since you, um, the fans haven't been able to see it. Tommy, Tommy, Muma go to the week yeah, in, in a while. Yeah, well, thank you. I'm going to go with Fernando Tatis, so I'm not going with the Yankee, but I got to go with a baseball player, of course. He's put together a very good week. Um, he's hit 444 over the past seven days, 10 RBIs, a couple of home runs. And, you know, he's just really consistent. The Padres are now in first place. Um, You know, they're right at the top, like many of them expected to be. 
you know, most expected the Dodgers, but at least now they're the top two teams. The Giants have slipped back into third, but they're still right there. But I think then the end, um, that's going to be what we see. But, you know, Tatis, he's put together a great week. You know, 10 RBIs in a week is pretty tough to do. And, you know, just to go back to that, Glaber Torres had seven and three games. So um, that <laughs> that's why Cotter won. I and- love it. I love it, Tommy. I'm feeling a nice little, nice little merger here, me and you versus. Yeah, Mike. I, I like it. I like it. I know, of course. So, yeah, I'm going with Tatis. That's about all I have. But all right, uh, Connor, might as well just give your your little pick for for your team over there. We are gonna go back to back this week. You know, watch- you're, okay, you're not going back to back. But go ahead. I will. I will put five dollars on it that I go back to back. Back. <laughs> Five dollars right now. Yep. Okay, fine. Deal. I'm going back to back oh because gosh. a 50 year old man stepped up to the tee box last Sunday at the PGA Championship with his career in golf uncertain, and Phil Mickelson <laughs> played that course in South Carolina and he won it. 51 years old, and he gained himself five more years of eligibility until all of the majors for the next five years. I already said that. He came onto that course in the hardest conditions that it was playing in all weekend and dominated, dominated. (laughs) He was up at most by five strokes in the final round. Eventually he did win by two because the win was insane on the back nine, but he came in from day one of that tournament last week and had the lead and controlled it the entire time. Phil Mickelson, People were not ever certain that they were going to see another Phil Mickelson win on the PGA Tour. Hell, he played in the freaking old golf league last year over in Europe. He was over in the old folks league. He comes back to the PGA Championship, and he's able to get himself a win. Connor, I, I, you realize that the odds are like I, – I, there's a 75% chance that I get $5 because – because. Mike can win. I still win $5. Tommy can win. I still win $5. Do you know what you got into? I, I am so confident in the fact okay. that, that people know who to vote for. I mean, you should have seen. Was any was any three of you watching the PJ Championship no. last week? I couldn't have cared. You, you were, Tommy? I actually, well, yeah, I watched like the end. Like I the, didn't watch sea, the sea of people that followed Phil Mickelson after that second shot from the rough onto the green for a two putt to win that tournament was insane. I have never seen a tournament lose more contain of their fans than there. I mean, thousands and thousands of golf fans following Phil Mickelson to the first time that he would win a tournament Connor. in eight years. It's given me goosebumps. I'm Connor. talking about it on Go Chat, and I have goosebumps. Connor, I'm gonna have to Incredible to off. see. I'm gonna have Phil to Mickelson's the go to the week. I'm going to have to cut you off there. You took like five minutes. And... It's five well-deserved minutes for Phil Mickelson. Okay. <laughs> Mike. The one year old PGA Tour champion. Mike, uh, you can go ahead. Jesus. Oh, my God. Uh, well, Connor, I'm happy you're done. Hopefully you can catch your breath over there. You know, I don't think I'm going to win this week. I'm just going to be upfront and honest about it. <laughs> I got to take Spencer Knight here. For those of you that don't know, he's a goalie for the Florida Panthers. He made his playoff debut um, this past week um, with Florida going up against the defending Stanley Cup champions in the Tampa Bay Lightning. The first shot that uh, the the Lightning shot against him, a two-on-one blown by the horrible Florida Panthers defense, Um, horrible defensive coverage there, and it goes in. You know, he's a rookie. He's a 20-year-old, right? In his first game ever, he was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to come down here and I'm going to shut the lightning down for the rest of the game. And that's exactly what he did. He had 38 saves for the rest of the game. 0.973 save percentage. He was absolutely lights out. He's going to be a future star in Florida. Hopefully he's going to be their goaltender for the next 15 years. He's the youngest goalie ever to win uh, an elimination game in, in uh, his playoff debut. So the poise he had as a 20-year-old to go out against there, against some of the best players in the world, Steven Stamkos, Victor Hedman, Nikita Kucherov. I mean, it's it was absolutely phenomenal to see him play. Uh, he just made no mistakes whatsoever. And unfortunately, the Panthers did ba- get balanced the next game after, but he still played very well in that game. All the goals he um, 
allow were due to the lack of defense the Panthers have. But I think Spencer Knight is very deserving of go of the week. I know it's not going to happen. It's probably going to be old man Phil or a Matt's pick. And just just to add on to the old man Phil point, that's why I, I don't think golf is a sport. If a 50-year-old can win a championship okay. of a sport, I mean, Are you on. kidding me? 50 oh, years old already. 50. Michael. Happen. Michael. I, can I just get my go of the week? <laughs> 50 years old, man. I mean, <laughs> listen, congrats to Phil. He he got he accomplished something so phenomenal. But I mean, in any realistic sport, a 50-year-old is getting bodied by any 30-year-old. Mike, that's what makes it great, though. You're taking a ball this size and putting it into a hole this size in four shots or less. Oh, okay, I'm I'm just my whole point about why golf isn't a sport is because it d- doesn't take that much athletic I, I want you to walk up right to Bryson DeChambeau, one of the biggest guys I've ever seen in any sport, <laughs> and tell him that he doesn't play a sport. Well, okay. Brooks Kepka might disagree, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even still. Bryson, Bryson DeChambeau was still good before he got jacked. You know Brooks what I mean? Kepka. Brooks Kepka is absolutely jacked, and he's two tournaments, two majors away from a grand slam. You can't tell these guys, you can't tell me, you can't tell the sports world that this isn't a sport. You can't. It doesn't matter if a 51-year-old can win it or an 18-year-old Tiger Woods. It doesn't matter. It's a sport. I I, I disagree with you there, Connor. I'm, I'm going to be straight up and honest with you. Matt, go ahead. Who's your go of the week? Why does this always happen? Like, I'm always the last one, and then they start fighting, and I give the go of the week, like, five minutes after, like, Wait, Tommy did. Him? Do you hear what he's saying? Connor. I need to stand up for this. Oh, my God. Connor, you're just really – you're really energized today for this go of the week. I swear I've never seen you light up so much talking We're about – talking about the lefty 51-year-old Phil Mickelson over here. Okay, well, I'll, I'll give some winners out. The winner of this go of the week – week i'm fairly confident it's going to be luka Doncic. what he's been able to bring to the table against the los angeles clippers he quite honestly is dominating kind of single-handedly carrying the team uh he got 39 in game two 31 in game one uh game one also he got a triple double and listen we thought the clippers were going to be the finals and do we want to talk about the score right now is 26 to 11 and Luka Doncic just got 11 points. I mean, they could quite honestly be 3-0 at this point uh, as you guys are watching the episode. and They could sweep, potentially, and that is going to be due part of Luka Doncic. He's gotten me two wins already in go of the week. He's going to he's going to deliver me my third and be up there with Buddy Bay. I mean, he's going to deliver me $5 uh, by Monday. Hundred percent. I'm not. I'm not, Connor. I'm so confident. You. You. You had no idea what you're getting into, buddy. I, I've never been more confident in a go to the week pick. You're telling me you're gonna, okay. Let's say the winner averages around ten votes. You're telling me you're gonna get ten Phil Mickelson votes. Yes. I mean, obviously, you're gonna get one pity vote from your girlfriend. Uh, obviously. Well, I'm gonna there. get Aiden Baum here. He told me that I'm gonna get Nick Tryon because I went golfing with both of them the other day. Uh, Donnie Blowers is gonna vote for me. So right, so right there is four. Um, and, and then, you know, I mean, we have over 500 followers on our page and I know some of them are incredibly intellectual and will, will vote for the best person who had the best performance this week. And that is undoubtedly Phil Mickelson. Oh, I don't you know. know what? I, I will make, I will make, I'll, I'll make a proposition. Tommy, Tommy messaged it to me while, while uh, Mike was giving his go to the week. And that's what I was laughing about. If I win go to the week, I will film the entire next go chat episode with a visor and sunglasses on in honor of Phil Mickelson and all that he accomplished and helping me get back to no, back. I think it should be, victories. I think it should be the other way around. I think if you win, Matt should have to do that. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Wait, so are we, are we scrapping the $5 and doing this now? Sure. Sure. All right. I, I, want, I want to put it onto Mike though, too, because he's the one saying golf isn't a sport. I don't even have a visor. So. Well, it looks like you might have to go spend some money if I'm playing on the week. Money. I have a Yankee visor. I, I do need a visor, though. The mail. We could get it by next Friday. If I win, go to the week. You guys have to film the entire next episode with a visor and sunglasses on because of Phil Mickelson. All right, what do you have to do? I, I, I'm, I have I'm to not do? in this. Wait, hold bucks. on. I think I think there's a good 
chance Connor wins. I mean, really, the only competition right now is Luka Doncic. No offense to to Tommy and I, but uh, oh, so, so I think there's going to be a lot of people voting for Connor. Mike's no. getting a little scared now after he's calling golf not a sport and say and taking it away from Phil because he's 51 years old. I never took away from Phil. I'm taking away from the sport of golf that you just let a 51 year old win one of your tournaments. That's what makes it great. You though. let him win. It was one of the hardest tournaments that the PGA Tour has seen in the last five years because of the conditions of the course and and the wind that was a factor off of the off of the ocean and they let him win. No, he went out there and dominated the course for four days to get a championship win. I don't care about the time. I'm gonna make my I do. Until, no, I'm going to make my point until you guys all understand that it's the only logical answer for go to the week. Oh, my gosh. Can we, uh, can we understand the proposition here, though? Because we have, two, win, we we have two witnesses right now, too. Guys. If I lose, I'll give you each five bucks. I'm in. You don't have to bring Mike into this if you don't want to. I'm in. That's fair. I'll wear a visor and sunglasses if I lose. I'm not going to lose. I don't have a visor. I don't really feel like going out to get one. Just Okay. No, I kind of do need a visor somewhat, so whatever. I'm in. Okay. I'll I'll wear a visor and sunglasses if uh, you win. Wait, am I involved in this? No, Tommy. You're on my side. Okay. I'm on Team Connor, so. So you're giving us five dollars? No, he's no, not, no. He's not a I just support him. He's just I'm like a fan of team right? time. So you're just gonna sit there and watch? Oh yeah, of course. I mean, I can't wait for next episode. I, you know what? I'll wear a visor though because I have a nice Yankee visor, and I'd like. Oh, to wear it. So you're on our team. <laughs> no. Well, I might just do it anyway, just for fun. Like, <laughs> all right, on, that's uh, a deal. That's a deal. When Luka Doncic wins go of the week, you're going to give us $5. And if the rare chance Phil Mickelson wins, a uh, 51-year-old uh, loser who decided to go to with Tom Brady, uh, if he wins, then we will wear a visor and sunglasses for episode 89. It's a deal. There we go. Two witnesses here, too. And all the viewers. And I'm all so the viewers. I am so confident in this. Okay. Deal. We'll see you on Monday. Go vote. Go to the week. Uh, vote for Luka Doncic. It's going to be on Monday on our Instagram. If you want to vote for Phil, uh, Dr. Phil, or Phil the Thrill Kessel, or Phil, uh, give me give me another Phil. Phil, uh, Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson, Phil Coffee. Uh, oh, Phil Collins, him. the singer. He's good. <laughs> Phil Collins <laughs> uh, with arms wide open. You could vote for him, but with arms wide open is by Creed. Same thing, dude. Same thing. All right. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. Yeah, I sound like you. Anyways, that is going to end the GOAT. (laughs) The GOAT chat episode 88. Hit that subscribe button. Follow us on Instagram. Vote for the GOAT of the week. On Monday, if you want to see me and Mike in visor and sunglasses, you're going to have to vote for Phil the Thrill Mickelson. If you don't want to see, if you want to see $5 in me and Mike's bank account, you're going to vote for Luka Doncic. That is all for Go Chat. We will see you guys next week.